this is the Welta Penti 2. This is uh, the fourth or fifth camera, not the second. It's actually the fourth or fifth model of a series of half frame cameras made by that company. Uh, wh what's interesting is that uh, I thought it was because it was named the Penti 2 that it was somehow related to the camera maker Pentacon, but that in fact is not true because uh, when it was introduced, uh, Welta was still an independent camera maker. I, be I believe later it was absorbed or, yeah, absorbed uh, by Pentacon. The Penti series half-frame cameras uh, debuted in the late 1950s. I'm not exactly sure of the year, and I'm of course I'm just reading from a, an entry on the internet. This camera is unusual because it has both a selenium-powered meter and uh, a focusing 30 millimeter lens, as well as a three-speed shutter and uh, selectable apertures. Well, let's just take a look at this camera. It has some a uh, couple of unique features. First of all, the camera itself was offered with several different coverings. The early cameras came in different colors. Uh, they often had this gold front, but uh, I think there was one that was almost like a pewter color. Another one had a greenish, I would say, not even sure how to describe that green. Maybe like a dull forest green back, and the other one had like a dull reddish, dark red back. Uh, they're, they're sort of unique. Particularly when you consider these were made uh, for these were made behind the Iron Curtain, and uh, life behind the Iron Curtain uh, often is described as rather colorless. This one I've seen uh, also in the gold coloring, the gold finish. I guess I guess I should say for the front. Uh, while this part, this trim or the surround of the camera, is more of a dark gray. So when you take a photo, something unusual happens. That's right. This plunger now extends from the body. To advance the film, you push in that plunger, and it and it advances it, uh, whatever half a frame is, 18 millimeters? Yeah, 18 millimeters. And while this is a unusual way to advance the film, it's not unheard of. With the most prominent example being the Voigtlander Vitessa. And we'll just take a real quick look at this camera. This is the uh, Vitessa the Voigtlander Vitessa, and if you push down on the uh, film release, or if you push the shutter release when it's closed, it will snap that open, and you can see this very tall plunger. And this is how you advance the film with this camera. Certainly no other camera had a plunger that extended this far. So someday we'll take a look at this camera. This is an all-metal body. I think the only plastic might be the uh, viewfinder, the viewfinder cover, and uh, oh, possibly these little tabs for your controls. When you're using this camera, it's it's somewhat unusual uh, because there are three different rings or three different collars that you have to be concerned with. Uh, one focuses the lens. A second one. Uh, changes the aperture, and then the third one changes your, changes your shutter speed. Your um, film speeds were listed down here, and they're only listed in DIN, which is not surprising, you know, because it, this was probably intended strictly for the European market. And it has uh, film speed settings in 15, 16, 21, and 24. 24, I believe, would be ASA or ISO 200 and 15, I'm not really sure about 15. What is 15? Maybe 50? This has a couple of uh, unusual things. It does have a accessory shoe. I'm not, a, I'm not sure if that's a hot shoe, but there is a flash synchronization post here. And uh, this is, of course is your frame counter and here's your shutter release. It's a fairly small body. Just how small is it? Well, someone in the household has my regular tape measure. I won't say who, but it's not me. So this body is uh, four inches wide and, and not quite three inches high. What, two and three quarters? You could say it's a very compact camera. So as I mentioned on the top deck, you have your flash synchronization post, uh, your frame counter, which goes up to 24. 
um, an accessory shoe and your shutter release. And this has this uh, shutter release is threaded, so it could take a cable uh, release if you wanted to. On one side here is a little eyelet for you to attach a uh, wrist strap, presumably. This is your film advance. On the back, just have your eyepiece. As I mentioned, uh, there are just a handful of controls on the front. Well, there's actually three collars. Uh, the outermost one, or the topmost one, is your um, um, your distance distance scale. Of course, there is no rangefinder focusing here, so it's really just a uh, guess your distance. This uses a Meyer Optic Dama Plan or Dami Plan. I'm not really sure how you pronounce that. This is a triplet, meaning it has three lens elements. And uh, maximum aperture is 3.5. This is a 30 millimeter lens, which was, uh, you know, sort of common for a half frame camera. And apertures ran from uh, 3.5 down to 22. This is a three speed shutter, well, four if you count B, and the three speeds were 125, 160th, and 130th of a second, plus B. On the base plate, you have your tripod socket, and that is in alignment with the center of the lens. Now, to open the camera, there's no back release or anything else or unlocking. You simply pull the back away from the body. And so you grasp here. In fact, there's little indents on each end. So you just grasp it with your thumb and forefinger, or thumb or middle finger probably, and simply pull the back away from the body. And it comes off. The other side of the back is, is plain. It's just uh, simply just the shell. And there are several things here. This, well, let's get to this first. Fresh roll of film goes here, and your empty take-up spool goes here. Here's your pressure plate. It's a little hinge pressure plate. And of course, the roll of pressure plate is to keep your film flat against the rails so that you'll take as sharp as photo as possible. Your eyepiece is still extended here. Uh, this is simply a hole. And there is a small dial here. And so you're wondering, what's that dial for? Well, the dial is to allow you to reset the, your frame counter when you're loading your film to reset your frame counter to zero. Now you're going to notice there's something missing in this camera, in the uh, film chamber. And so what's missing? What's missing are any, uh, any forks or anything that, that would be used to actually advance the film. So, for example, when you do that, you see no moving parts, nothing here and nothing here. So how exactly did you load this camera? And in fact, if we were to take a 35 mil standard 35 millimeter cassette, it doesn't even fit in here. What was the photographer to do? What the photographer did was they would purchase... The Agfa Rapid Cassettes. And uh, you could buy these at one time preloaded with film. And it's just standard 35 millimeter film. Uh, your fresh roll of film went here on the left. Your take up spool goes on the right. Notice that there's this small little arm. Just push that, push that up out of the way. And it's interesting because you have this little arm that keeps this in place, but nothing on the um, fresh roll of film side. You would then take your film and you would insert it into the uh, slot in your take up in your uh, take up canister, and you can see that there is a very small slot here. In fact, I will demonstrate this. There. Now you can see how that would work. So you would insert uh, just a small bit of the film in here. This, this, uh, this small little thing runs on a rail. This small little protrusion runs on a rail and it catches a sprocket of the film and it pushes it into the film cassette. So that's unusual, but not for cameras that use an Agfa Rapid cassettes. So with these cassettes, it doesn't pull the film from uh, the fresh roll into the uh, take-up spool. Rather, it pushes it from the fresh roll into the take-up spool. And you'll be able to see that. This you'll see, Watch this move. So 
So what happens when you take your uh, photo, this piece then slide this piece then slides from the right all the way to the left. And then when you advance to the next frame, it catches that sprocket and pushes it the necessary distance. So after loading those two, all you would do, well, after loading your, your film into the take-up spool, giving it a start, and you don't need much. You only need maybe an inch. You would simply replace the back. And so the easiest way to do that is to make sure it catches on the right side and then give it a little wiggle, make sure it's secure, and you're good to go. Of course, before you replace the back, make sure that you've reset your frame counter to uh, zero. And then, of course, you would do as you would do with any camera. You would fire off two blanks. And then the next time you push in that plunger, you're ready to start shooting. So this actually uses match needle metering. Remember, uh, because this is a half-frame camera, uh, the photos that you take actually are vertical, not horizontal. So let, let's go to my board. So with this camera, the viewfinder actually, like I said, is vertical. And so on the right side, you, uh, there are some frame lines in here. There are two vertical parallax marks, right? Well, they would be right here and right here. And, uh, but there are no indicators as far as shutter speed or aperture or distance or anything. That's all you get. And so uh, this uses, as I mentioned, match needle metering. And so there is a small little indicator, a small little bar, and that just shows you, that is uh, actually your shutter speed um, your set shutter speed, although it doesn't re doesn't have any mark speed, so you don't really know what it is. And so what you do is you adjust your aperture or your shutter speed dial, although quite frankly, I would set the shutter speed first and then adjust the aperture until this needle uh, will floats up and down until it matches, until it overlays the, uh, the, uh, the your small indicator here. And that's what's known as match needle metering. So this certainly looks like a tiny camera. However, around the same time that this model was introduced, which was the early 1960s, Agfa, uh, maker of the Agfa Rapid Cassettes, ironically introduced its own half series of half-frame cameras. And the one that the model that's most comparable to the Penti 2 is this one. This is the Agfa Paramat. And so, uh, if you can if you can tell. These cameras are very, very close in size to each other, both in width. Uh, the Agfa model is slightly taller, but not by much, and it is uh, somewhat thicker. This one also had a removable back. I'm not going to do a review of this camera, but I just wanted to show you very quickly. Uh, however, this uses this used uh, standard 35 millimeter film, and you can see. You can see here it is. You can see how this is laid out very uh, traditionally like other 35 millimeter cameras. It is ironic that Agfa, which developed the Agfa Rapid Cassette, uh, did not use it in its own half frame camera. But photography is full of interesting stories like that. I haven't shot any film with it. However, I can tell you the one thing that I would be concerned by is the slipperiness of the body. I think if I were to use this, I would definitely get some type of uh, hand strap here, wrist strap, to just to, uh, to just hold on to the camera. When I got this camera, it really uh, reeked of uh, perfume. So I'm going to guess it was owned by a woman. And it probably took a good yeah, year and a half or so for that, for that aroma to uh, finally go away. And you could see how this would be uh, carried by a woman because, you know, it's a small camera. It's fairly simple to use. Uh, the only thing is, once again, is you would have to get used to, uh, because it's scale focused, you would have to get used to setting the distance. And also you would have to understand how to um, uh, do match needle metering. Not real difficult to do, but, for, you know, fairly simple. Uh, the one thing I like about it is the top-mounted shutter release. The Agfa, on the other hand, 
has a front-mounted shutter release. Front-mounted shutter releases have a tendency for the user to, of course, pull down on the camera slightly. Not intentional, but it's always something you have to be aware of when you're using a camera with a front-mounted shutter release, especially one that uh, operates in a very vertical manner. The entire series of cameras sold more than 800,000 units, and just a quick look on eBay uh, earlier today showed that these are really available. They're widely available. They're not on, they're not rare, although you don't see them much in the U.S. And I think it's because of the easy availability of the Olympus Pen cameras. Uh, once again, sort of similar size, although the pen is slightly wider and however it's shorter. How about back to back? Roughly the same. This uh, the pen might be a bit thicker, so it's slightly wider. Uh, uh, shorter and thicker. So, so how exactly would you load film into an Agfa Rapid cassette? By the way, the Agfa Rapid cassettes are still widely available today, and I, I bought a bunch about 10 years ago. So, you need a changing bag, you also need a bulk loader. Well, I would say if you're going to shoot this camera, you're probably going to be uh, more dedicated than most photographers. So, uh, here is what you would do. So what you would do, put that off to the side here. So what you would do is I would get a changing bag. And uh, if, you, if you're just using standard 35 millimeter film, start off by putting that roll of film into a bag and firing off, let's say, 13, advance it 13 times. That's why you, do, you, either, you can either do it in a changing bag or... If you're using a regular camera, just put a lens cap on, use your highest shutter speed and your slowest uh, and your smallest aperture, and then also do it in a very dim room, not with much light. Uh, that way, you know, you're, you, you're going to be, you're going to be, um, you're going to ensure that you aren't exposing the film. Then put your camera in a changing bag or go into a completely dark room, open the back, I'll give you an example. Not with film, though. So you would open the back. You would remove that cassette. You would slice the film right here. Then push that rewind button. Then you're going to take that film, the end of that film, and you're going to feed it into this cassette. And you're going to feed the entire length of film into this cassette, which means you're going to be pulling it out of the... You're going to be pulling it out of the camera a bit at a time and feeding it into the cassette. So that's one way. The second way involves a, a bulk loader. So with a bulk loader, uh, what you do is you you essentially roll your own film. And I've done this many times. And so you still need to get a 35 millimeter film cassette, you know, an empty cartridge, uh, tape it to the spool. And in this case, you would then wind it. And every click that you hear in a bulk loader is one frame. So because it can shoot a max of 24, that's going to be 12 frames. But uh, you'll want two blanks and then a third one. So I would do 12 plus 3, 15 shots. Once you're finished with that, uh, uh, remove the... You know, close your light baffle in your um, bulk loader, open the door to it, take out that roll of film, snip the end, go into a changing bag. Although in this case, before you uh, go into a changing bag, you could then take that roll of film, for example. Remember I showed you that before? And you could slip it in here. You could at least start it. Then take this, put it into a changing bag and then feed that film all the way in. Of course, don't push it all the way into the, uh, into the cassette because you still want some extended. You probably want about this much extended. So you're going to push all the film from the bulk loaded cassette into this Agfa Rapid cassette. When you're finished, you'll, like I said, you should have maybe inch, inch and a half um, left uh, hanging out. Now you can come back here. Drop this, drop this in. Well, once again, do this. Have both your cassettes out at the same time. Take that leader, run it into the, uh, run it into the empty cassette. Then run it in a little bit more. Now take the entire assembly and drop it into your camera like so. 
Now you can close that pressure plate, flip over the pressure plate, close the back, and you are ready to go. You're ready for some photography. This back is a little bit finicky, or so just make sure you keep, do a, do a couple practice things on closing the back. Because sometimes when you close the back, you think it's closed, but it's not. Now it's closed. So check each side and you're good. Because this was a German camera, there are no foam seals and there's no flocking material. I haven't shot this camera. However, I have, uh, I have preloaded uh, Agfa Rapid cassettes and, and I th did it with a bulk loader. So it's not impossible. It just takes time. And it also tests your resolve. How dedicated a photographer are you? <laughs> okay. Let's check the weight of these cameras. 10 ounces. No surprise there. How about the Agva? Maybe 13 ounces? Oh, 11 and a half. This one's slightly more. Feels, it feels more solid. 13 ounces. Even with film loaded, you're still talking uh, about a very lightweight camera. And because of its small size, you can easily, easily slip this into a pocket. You know, the, the lens really doesn't protrude much, much at all. Um, the Dami plan, a triplet. A triplet is a triplet. You don't get great performance out of a triplet. You should get pretty decent performance out of a triplet. I've used this uh, lens on a Pentacon Electra and it was a very unusual shot wide open like at a medium distance. If you really like those old photos with the circular backgrounds uh, you'll have a lot of fun with this camera. I would expect that by the time you stop it down to f8, f11, f16 that uh, all those characteristics will then disappear and you know you'll just get a regular uh, regular photo. If you enjoyed this video don't forget to press that like and subscribe button or like and or subscribe button and if you have any thoughts on any cameras you'd like to see me cover in the future please let me know in the comments below or send me an email at contact at camera-talk.net. So I would say find yourself a half frame camera and go out and take some photographs. And if you don't have a half frame camera, go out and take some photographs anyway.